Hey there everyone, my name's Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Welcome back everyone to another update. This is update number 21 on the Enterprise E project and my goal for this update was to do all of the refining work, putty work, all the detail, installation, photo etch, all of that stuff. But first, we're going to have to put that on hold because I ran into a bit of an issue. I was working on condensing down some of those wires and I didn't have the right colored wire on a few of the wires that come from the nacelles. And so I was testing them, figuring out which ones went where, and I got to the Buzard collectors and well, I forgot that they weren't resistored. Yeah, big problem. I put too much voltage through and blew one LED on each side. That's one LED in that cluster of three on the Buzard collectors. So I've had to crack open the warp nacelles to repair, replace those LEDs. Now, that's bad news, but there is some good news on that because I am now going to be able to replace the fiber optic lines that had gone in there with those 0402 SMDs, which I think are going to look so much better. The other benefit to this is I'm gonna replace the lenses for the Bizarre Collectors too. You see, I was originally building this for myself and I did them red. And when my client decided to buy it, his preference would have been for the frosted Bizarre Collector lenses and only for them to go red when there's power, when the lights are on. And well, the nacelles were already together. That was already done by the time he decided he wanted to buy it. So I was like, well, it's already done. Uh, it's a little bit hard, but since I've had to crack open the nacelles, I've decided to pop out those red lenses and put the frosted lenses in instead. So I think that's gonna make my client much happier to have it exactly the way that he wants it. And it's gonna make me a lot happier knowing that the nav lights on the warp engines are gonna be the SMDs instead of the fiber optic lines because I just think that they look so much better. So a little bit of bad news, a little bit of good news because I think by the end it's actually gonna be a better product that's coming out. So you've always gotta be happy with that. So I need to get all of that work done, the repair work. I've already cracked open one side. I will show you that. Uh, and uh, so I've repaired the LED on the Pizarro Collector there. And behind me, uh, you can kind of see I've got six 0402 white SMDs on their stress test right now um, so that I can get those installed as well. Also, one additional change I'm making since I'm into the warp nacelle is I am putting down blue lighting gels over the white LED strips for the warp nacelles because then we're also going to go with the frosted chiller grill underneath that photo wedge um, so that the blue isn't showing again until the warp engines are on. So we're making all of those adjustments. Then once all of those adjustments are done, we can get back on track with the refining work, the putty work, getting the photo etch installed and getting this thing prepared for paint. I am so looking forward to the painting stage on this. I can't wait to get to it, but I have to. I have to, because you can't rush any of this. The moment that you try to rush it, you're gonna mess it up. Also, you know, it is a little bit of, uh, of, of difficulty, of stress, uh, you know, when something doesn't go right, like blowing one of those LEDs on the Bizarre Collectors. But when you're dealing with this hobby, the thing that's most important to remember is there's nothing you can't fix. There's absolutely nothing you can't fix. It might take a little bit of work to figure out just how you're going to do it. It might be a little time consuming and you might really just have to get creative and you might have to crack open the model. But if you think about it and you take your time, you're patient with it and you don't get frustrated, you will figure out a way to solve any of the problems that come up. You can do anything. It's just a matter of how and the time to do it. So if you run into a problem with your project, don't give up. If you can't figure out what the solution is, Go online, you can watch YouTube tutorials 
or you can connect with the different Facebook communities around model building. There is always a way to solve the problems. And this, what I'm dealing with right now, is just proof that there is always a way to solve those problems. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Here we have the opened up warp nacelle. Now I've already gone ahead and done most of the work that's necessary to do all the upgrades and repair work. And let me give you a little quick tour of what's going on. In the front, we have those cluster of three red LEDs. And it was the top one right there that had blown out. So I had to separate the bundle, desolder the LED that was here, replace it, get it all packaged back up into this cluster and make sure that it all worked. Now, one of the other upgrades that I've done is you can see this really thin wire here. That's going to a 0402 SMD right in the top there. And in the back of the ship, we also, in this wire cluster, have the wiring for the upper and the lower 0402 SMDs for the rear navigation lights. Now, the rear ones are on a flashing circuit. The one that's right up top here is a steady on. So in order to get the steady on, I had to find extra power because I did not have power going to this. Essentially, I had the, I was cheating a bit. I had the fiber optic coming through here and then grabbing light off of the LED on the light strip. So similarly, I am now grabbing power off of the end of the LED strip for the 0402 SMD. And that's worked out really well because this is a steady on versus the others that are the flashers. The other upgrade that I've done is the frosted Buzard Collector lenses. There's the outside, there's the inside. And uh, they've been frosted with a um, frosted glass spray paint. And there's also something else going on on the inside here, which I'm just not going to tell you about, uh, that will help out with all of the lighting diffusion. So that should just glow a nice red when those LEDs are on, but be this nice frosted white during the rest of the time. I've also gone and stripped the blue paint off of the chiller grills. They won't be installed till closer to the end. And then you're asking, okay, well, if you've got white LED tape inside uh, the warp nacelle, are you replacing it with blue LED strips? Well, no, that would be a waste of time. So instead, what I've got, and I just have to still install them, is this blue lighting gel. This is theatrical lighting gel. And this is going to be adhered to the LED strip. And that's going to give the blue lighting on the chiller grills. So the chiller grills, when they're off, won't have a blue color to them at all. Uh, but then they will glow a nice blue once the lighting is on. So that's how I'm taking care of that. So I just have to install the lighting gel. Then I will seal this thing back up and it will be complete. Then I have to essentially rinse and repeat on the other side. And a quick look of the outer shell of the nacelle back in place and clamped on. This is going to sit for a good chunk of the day today to uh, properly adhere and cure. And then later today, I'm going to crack open the other nacelle. Warp nacelle refit is complete. I'm really happy with the way that that's turned out. I've also been spending a little bit of time working on the wiring, getting it all reduced down so that it goes down the post um, nice and easily. I'll show you the spaghetti that's coming out of the bottom of the ship. That's going to be all going nicely down the post, uh, reduced down as much as I could in the neck area here. The only wiring I still have to reduce down is the really fine wiring for those 0402 SMDs. So what I'll do is I will put all of the solid ones together and then uh, just have wiring going down at the post. And there's one that is a flasher that'll just get hooked up to some wire and run down the post. Um, I'm not wanting to put the really fine wire down the post itself. I want something a little bit more robust in case there's any turning or twisting going on 
inside there. So if I turn I very carefully turn the ship this way, you can see those nice new frosted Buzard Collector lenses. Those have turned out really nicely on there. So uh, that's all I'm going to do tonight. Tomorrow I'll get the rest of those 0402 SMD lines reduced down, wired up to go down the post, and then the cover will go on here. There's one SMD that has to go in right about there. That'll get epoxied in tomorrow as well before I reduce everything down. And then the cover will go on. Now I'm looking at a couple different options as far as how I'm securing down that cover. Here's the thing. I would like that to be as accessible as possible in case in the future anything ever has to be done uh, with the wiring because this area here is the hub for all of the wiring on the ship and if anything's going to need to be dealt with in the future that's where it's going to need to be dealt with um, hopefully nothing will ever have to be dealt with but uh, this is um, where all that wiring would be traced to if at any point in the future of this build anything would need to be taken care of of. So I would like this to be able to be secure enough that it won't ever go anywhere unless you actually want to pop it off to deal with wiring. So looking at a couple options there and uh, we'll see what happens with that. But that's work for tomorrow. Finally, the neck cap is on. It's being secured nicely in place with elastic bands and it is going to sit that way for a little while this afternoon. Next up on the agenda is to add a bunch of the final detail parts. So there's going to be the shuttle bay doors that are going to go on the back. There is a uh, phaser strip and some panels that need to go on the bottom. A few things here and there, plus some photo etch parts that will need to be attached. Once that's done, I'll be going around doing all the final seam work, uh, getting the whole thing ready for paint. <laughs> So I've gone ahead and added a bunch of the detail photo etch and some of the detail kit parts that uh, needed to go on here. Primarily, you'll notice that there is the sensor palette photo etch right behind the bridge here. Um, there is the, it's going to be hard to see because it's already been primed, but the photo etch parts that go on the front of the nacelles here, those have gone on. There are photo etch parts for the airlocks, however, um, you should be able to see on an inset that uh, the docking ports actually come out from the ship quite a bit. So I decided in this case that the kit parts were probably a little closer to the look of the filming miniature. And on the bottom of the ship, we have this plate that goes over here, which also includes the um, phaser strip here. This was one of the most annoyingly designed kit parts in the world. I don't think it's a good design. And uh, I think that there definitely is an aftermarket option uh, or opportunity, I should say, for this part. It just does not fit well at all. If I ever build this again, I will look at an aftermarket kit part for the deflector housing and the captain's yacht area because that was also um, quite a bit of a problem. And then back here, we've got the tractor beam emitter that's been installed. So those are the additional detail parts, except for one more, which I almost forgot and uh, this is going to be a little bit of an odd angle for you but since I'm here oh you can barely see them basically the end caps have been put on the ends of the nacelles you can see those end caps a little clear here now there is a lot of uh, putty cleanup work to do on the nacelles uh, so those will look better once that's all done. So with those photo etch and plastic detail parts installed, that's going to be it for this update. I'm going to be moving on to putty, dry, sand, repeat. Putty, sand, dry, repeat. And that's going to be quite a long and tedious task. It's probably going to take me a week or two to get all of the seam work done across the whole ship. So I'm sure you don't want to watch me puttying and sanding and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do that between updates. So when I come back with the next update, I will hopefully have a pristinely 
puttied and seam worked ship to show you and we should be getting in to the painting stage which I'm super excited for. So I hope that you've enjoyed this update. I know it's a little bit shorter but we're just at one of those states where I need to move on to the next phase. So if you did enjoy this update, please make sure that you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do. But for now, I'm Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.